All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, another day, another cheap banger. Only this time, I think I've got it right. Actually, right might be a bit of a stretch, but I can't see how I could get this wrong. I got a call yesterday from a mate of mine who's a car trader, and he said, how much would you give for a 2010 Golf Mark VI, 1.6 TDI, done 167, with scruffy bodywork? So I was thinking, 2010, 167, it's quite high, I suppose. Hmm, it's gotta be worth 1,200 quid, hasn't it? And he said, yeah, that's exactly what I thought you'd say. Well, it's 700 quid, do you want it? How could I say no to that? And the rest, as they say, is history. And that is about as much as I know at this point. I've asked him to drop it off for me on the car park. I assume he's driven it there, so I'm guessing it starts and stops. The bodywork can't be that bad, can it? Can it? It's not on the register, so it's never been written off. And it's only had two owners from new. So I'm feeling quite confident about this. They're probably famous last words. Let's go and have a look then, shall we? What on earth is going on here? Typical, a cash guy holding up the traffic, doesn't know what day it is. Well, I've just stopped by the garage for the key. Key, key, singular, not plural. What can I expect really for 700 quid? In case you're wondering by the way, I'm currently using my dad's Disco 4. He's away for a few days and he asked me if I'd sort the tracking out because the tracking was like way off. So I got all that sorted, then I got it detailed and all cleaned up for him, so it's nice when he gets back. But then I noticed it was full of fuel, and I mean like full tank. So that's why I'm using it. Unlucky dad, better look next time. There's just something about a Discovery 4, I really like using it. Similar driving position to a Range Rover, but it's just a bit more utilitarian. You feel like slightly less of a show off in it. I just think it's a really good all-rounder. Right, anyway, we're nearly here, so I'll put you out of your misery. Right, well, we're here. It's silver. The alloys look quite nice. Oh, it's an SE, isn't it? Yeah, so it'll have a bit of spec about it. And the bodywork, I mean, from afar, looks okay. Doesn't look like it's ever been on its roof. We've got original Williams plates. The reg is GU10, so it's a Garden of England car, so it's come from down south. Probably an ex-renter. Right, let me do a vehicle history check. Now, before you buy a car, it's really important that you do a vehicle history check. I always use a company called Car Vertical. All you do is go to carvertical.com, type in the vehicle reg, and it'll give you the full detailed history of the car. I've done a deal with Car Vertical to save you guys some money, so if you click the link below in the video description and use the promo code HIGHPEAK, you'll get 10% off each and every check that you do. Right, let's do this one. So, Golf Uniform 10. X-ray, X-ray, Kilo, check vehicle. It's checking databases now in dozens of countries. Right, this just takes a few moments. I might as well turn the engine off. Everybody seems to get really annoyed when I leave the engine running. Right, view report. Okay, so we've got a warning here. The mileage of the vehicle may have been tampered, but on the bright side, it has never been stolen, never been involved in any accidents. There's no finance outstanding on it. Right, it was manufactured in February 2010, first registered in March 2010. It shows all the maintenance on this report as well. So it's had some maintenance in 2012, 2013, and it's first MOT in 13. Oh, that's a good point, actually. Let's see if there's any MOT on it. I'm expecting a short MOT because a car like this will have been traded in with probably a week to go. Let's have a look. Right, this has been maintained on a shoestring this car because every single MOT there are advisory items. Now anyone with any sense and you know some spare cash would have just sorted those advisory items out rather than letting them build up every single year. Others, they just get longer and longer. Engine management light, uh, okay lovely, oil leak, yeah perfect. Right so it was last done in May 20, oh, 21, 22. Right. It's got an MOT until next May 2023. That was better than I thought. There are quite a few advisory items though. So, first one, windscreen washer provides insufficient washer liquid. Near side front seatbelt buckle slightly damaged. Exhaust pipe has minor leak of gases. Near side rear lower suspension arm corroded but not seriously weakened. Offside same. And offside rear suspension arm pin or bush worn but not resulting in excessive movement from trailing arm bush. Terrific. So I was told it had done 167, and the last MOT it had done 164. Let's see where the mileage went amiss then. 
Uh, right, this is obviously a, an operator error. This is what really bugs me. So, it had done... In 2012, it done 32,000 miles. 2013, it done 61,000 miles. Done a lot of miles then. Right, this is where the problem happened then. So it done 77 one year, 2014. Then 88, 2015. Then in 2016, it dropped to 36. Then in 2016, back up to 106. Now, I suspect that if you use a an ounce of common sense, someone's read that wrong. I would say that that has done 77, then 88, then 96. Someone, I'm guessing, has read a... A three for a nine. I don't think there's anything to worry about there. Why would you clock a car for, for that sort of mileage and then do it the same? It doesn't make any sense. On average, it takes this model 20 days to sell because it's in demand. I can't imagine that particular one being in demand, but we'll see. Right, let's park this beast up then and go and have a look. Right, okay, let's go and have a walk around it. I still need to do something with that Navara. I try to pretend it doesn't exist, but one day I'm gonna to have to do something with it. Okay, right. Now, as always, I'm not moaning about this. I'm just giving you a, a narration of what I can see, basically. So we've got a harmonic tire on the back. Never heard of it. The wheel's battered. We've got a dented rear wheel arch there. Dent on the door. It's not too bad though, is it? It's no worse than a car you'd see in France, Spain, Italy. Back bumper's scraped. We've got registration plate on the back that says the car people, and the front one says Williams, so they don't match, which means one of those plates has been uh, replaced at some point, which means it's probably had a bump. It's the 1.6 blue motion. So this will be low road tax, 20 quid or 30 quid a year. The back lights aren't cracked. We've got Manchester B there. Nice to see. We've got some corrosion there on the top of the sill cover and the bottom of the door. Lots of scratches there. That's somebody with long nails then. This has been owned by a, a lady. Front tire is Okay, that matches. It's another harmony, harmonic. And again, the wheel is battered. Front wing's okay. The bumper, yeah, this is at a minor collision at the front then I would say, because the bumper's out. The headlamps are okay though. Front plate is being held in with wood screws that aren't even level, that's an atrocious job. Bonnet's good. You could break this car for more money, you know. We've got a, is this another Harmony? No, odd tire. It gets slightly worse around this side. So we've got, right, we've got two matching tires on the driver's side and two odd tires on the near side. That looks old as well. Somebody asked me if I would mention the dates of these tyres as well. I'm trying to find the date stamp. All tyres have a date stamp on them, so you can see. This looks old, so this will be a good example, actually. Why can't I see the date stamp? Right, let me try a different tyre then, see if I can demonstrate. Uh, date stamp, date stamp. Can't see one on there either. I'll try another tyre. Made in China. That's where harmonic tyres come from. They'll be quality, won't they? Why can't I see the date stamp? Oh, there we go, there we go. Right, here we go. Right, so it's four digits. 
so July 22 so that's quite a recent tyre I suspect this one is the same 0722 does it say anywhere 0722 right that's the date stamp so they're they're recent These tyres are made in Slovenia. The only thing that I can see that might be it is that, 1821. I don't think that's right. I don't think that's right. Mm, I'm not convinced. Sorry for wasting three minutes of your life there, guys. Right, that bumper's a bit of a mess. It's not too bad though, is it? This was described to me as scruffy. It, it is a bit scruffy actually, but it's not, it's not terrible, is it? Right, let's put the discovery key away. Hmm, flicker thing's broken. Oh, there we go. Oh, what have we got here? What an absolute bucket. Who keeps the car like this? Tell me you don't have a vacuum cleaner. Okay, so we've got a broken gear knob. We've got mess everywhere, no mats. It's just been trashed. Plastic steering wheel, no leather. The seats aren't ripped though. And in the back, it gets even worse. This has just been a kiddie abused thing, hasn't it, this? Broken vents here. Mashed up food. Empty bottles, straw, hay. I'm guessing they live in quite a rural area. Really like a detective at this point. It stinks of, I think it's spilt milk. And as they say, there's no point crying over that. Is the bottle opener still here? All these uh, golfs have a bottle opener attached to this. No, it's gone, should go in there. Got an auxiliary point. An old iPod connector. Small cigarette burn there. Yeah, okay, right. I'm getting a picture then for this car's ownership. A broken cup holder assembly there. Yeah, this is a skip. It needs a proper clean, this. Proper clean. Let's have a look in the boot. We've got a missing parcel shelf, more mess. This is actually the cleanest area of the car. How embarrassing. Some buttons there, Cadbury's buttons. I found five pence. Car gets cheaper. We've got a space saver wheel back there. 12 volt socket, I didn't know they had these. That door handle's been painted. In fact, that's that's come off a off a red car. This is out a door then. Or maybe just a new handle. Yeah, this is a bit of a skip, but well worth 700 pounds, isn't it? Let's have a look under the bonnet then. Oh, broken wires here but automatic lights, four electric windows, heated mirrors, air conditioning. Some storage there with the locking wheel nut. Oh, hey. Just noticed a dent on the roof there. This has never been cleaned ever. We've got that looks quite low, let me see if there's anything in it. Uh, no, there's something in there actually. Might need a little bit of a top up, but... Washer fluid looks dry as a bone. It is just a neglected thing, this. Neglected. Check the oil there. Now this is a diesel, so it's going to be black anyway, but let's see if it's gloopy. It's not too bad, is it? 
like it's not like treacle or anything no obvious leaks right there was also no sticker there to say the cam belt's been done oh this stinks so we've done 166 720 it really does smell awful this There's the broken seat well, it was advised on the MOT. There's just all sorts of rubbish everywhere. What I don't understand is every village or every town in the UK has got a, a car wash. Just go in, pay 10 pounds and get your car cleaned if you can't be bothered doing it yourself. It's just disgusting. I'm trying to touch anything here. Foul. Right. doors need a bit of WD-40. The sunglasses holder there is broken, I don't know how that happens, and that is very, very grubby. Very grubby. I just couldn't use this every day, it would depress me. Why do people have no pride? Imagine the state of this person's house. Steering lock is on. Bit of gadeo. Knock that off, right. Right, we've got every warning light on here. Hang on, check left reversing light, low fuel. What else? Okay, right, Let's see if it starts then. We've got an exclamation mark. Check coolant, check coolant, that's quite angry at me. Bulb light, engine light, fuel light. Like I say, there is no service history at all, so I don't know when it was last serviced. And this is a, this is, right, this is a two owner car. You know, I did that video about multiple owners and don't be put off by, this is a two owner car, so on paper you'd think, hmm, it's been maintained, hasn't it? Nope. I'm guessing this has been an ex-renter car for its first year, then the second owner bought it and has just ran it into the ground. I'd far rather this be a six or seven owner car in better shape than this. Oh, it's warm in here as well. I very much doubt this air conditioning works, but we'll give it a try. Mm, yeah, no, that's not really doing anything at all. Do the windows work? That one does, but it's noisy. I've just noticed that wing mirror cover's slightly loose, and that one isn't on correctly because you can't see the indicator properly. Rear windows. Look at the state of that. Anyway, last one. Last one. Last one does not work. Does it work from back there? Let's have a look. No. So, one window does not work and the other three do. Hmm. I know I said I can't really go wrong with this, but that said, I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with it. I've just tried the clutch and it doesn't vibrate or anything, but then again, I don't think the 1.6 has a dual mass flywheel. I think it's just the two litre. Could be wrong there. Right, let's take this for a drive then and see what it's like. Right, I think what I'm going to do first is just swing by the garage and check the levels on this car before I drive it too far because I don't want to do it any more, any more damage. Previous owner for the last 10 years obviously didn't care, but I do. So I'll check the levels, then I think I'm going to take it to the car wash because I really don't want to drive around in something that's as scruffy and stinking as this. But it actually drives all right. Clutch feels fine, engages gear, there's no crunches on any of the gears. Trying to work out whether it was a five speed or a six because half the gear lever is missing and it is only a five. I know it's scruffy and the air conditioning doesn't, doesn't work, but I can't quite believe I've got a Mark VI Golf here for just £700. It just seems very cheap. Let me do that and I'll catch up with you later. Right guys, we're back. I've got it all washed off, and that was honestly the best £20 I've ever spent. It looks a whole lot better. It has shown up some more areas of damage that were hidden by the muck, but, but generally it does look cleaner, and the inside isn't absolutely disgusting like it once was. I stopped by the garage first and checked all the levels. I actually managed to get one of the lights out. That was the fuel light, admittedly. It cost me £15 for about 8 litres of diesel. 
Anyway, then I had a brainwave. These lights, I'm guessing the coolant light that's flashing is just a dodgy sensor. The engine light's on, and that's just a, a bulb out warning light. But I thought, why don't I use my little Carly OBD scanner? This isn't sponsored by them, by the way, but I just thought I'd try it. So I've plugged it in, and all we need to do is go to the little Carly app, sync it to the car, and then check for issues. This might take a while. I'm guessing this car is riddled with them. You know, the longer I spend in this time, the more I find that's broken. For example, the, the handle on the adjuster for the forwards and backwards on the seat is snapped. So that's snapped and missing. The sunglass holder's snapped and missing. The top of the gear lever's snapped and missing. How do you lose all these items? I just don't understand. It's now 68% complete and we've got nine issues. Keep going. I think there's, oh, 10, 10 issues. Come on, come on. 11 issues, 89% complete. 12, 100% complete. A dozen issues. Right, let's see what they are. The engine has got six issues. So we've got glow plug module control circuit. That's showing a fault. And it's listed all the fault codes here as well. Particulate filter pressure sensor A. Neutral position sensor, signal implausible, whatever that means. This is the only issue with one of these readers. You've got to have half a mechanical brain and I don't really. So let's clear them and see if it comes back on. As if by magic, the engine light is off. So if we repeat the check now, shame my Carly app can't regas the air conditioning because I'm sat here sweating. Ah, it also shows, that's interesting, there's an issue with the rear left door. Could explain why the window doesn't work, couldn't it? Perhaps there's just no power to it at all. Ah, supply voltage, door controller, rear left. That's clever, isn't it? So the engine light is now off. God knows how long it'll stay off for. We've still got a flashing coolant light and we've still got a bulb out. So not the end of the world. In between all this, I sent a couple of photographs of this car to a mate of mine who buys some of my cheap bangers. And he's now bought it, or will be buying it shortly. I thought I could get a thousand pounds for it, but the more I look around it, it's got issues everywhere. So what I've done is sold it to him for 800 pounds. So I've made a whopping profit of 100 pounds. But in all fairness, I haven't had to do an awful lot for it. The mini valet cost me 20 pounds. I put 15 pounds of diesel in it, so that's 35 pounds. So I've made a massive 65 pounds profit. Not bad really for half an hour of my time. So there we are. Thank you once again for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'll leave the link below. If you've got any comments or questions, let me know below and I'll do my best to get back to you. So yeah, cheers guys. I'll see you next time.